everybody, where's Wally here? Greater Sapien, after his most excellent adventure with Critical Think, took Qantas Flight QF-63 from Sydney to Johannesburg on the 29th of January 9, uh, 2019, and that left at 106 UTC. Jerry had a top-notch seat, and the video camera was pointing out the window for 13 hours. He also had a bad ELF GPS, logging the whole flight. The KML file from the uh, logger is shown in red, and the KML file from Flight Radar is shown in black. These two match exactly, except where Flight Radar was unable to receive the data from the plane via the ADSB transmissions. The new Iridium Next Sat constellations will fix all that, but that's another video, and the link is in the description below. Interestingly, Sydney is at minus 33 degrees south, and Johannesburg is minus 26 south, and it is actually closer to the equator. The plane didn't go west, but almost due south. A great circle line for sure, guys. I will play through this video, but I'll skip all the boring bits. 13 hours and 10 minutes, I'm only just going to show you the highlights. Proof that it is Jerry, well that's a good start. Then we'll check on the GPS lat longs and timestamps from the KML file and see that they line up within a few metres as the plane taxis over the highway. Next, I calculated the field of view using the plane's position and then two spots on the other side of the water. It worked out to be about 30 degrees and about 90 degrees out of the right, 90 degrees to the right of the plane's track. As the plane turned around 180 degrees at the end of the taxiway, we see a perfectly clear sky from the west, then to the south, and then to the east. Next, I compared that to the Himawari 8 image at the same time to show that there was no clouds as well. That's match number one. While I am looking at the cloud patterns, there is another camera that I can add. The Discover Epic camera should have been right overhead because it's midday. But due to the government shutdown in America, there was no images from it, which is kind of sad. But wait, there is the ISS and it was also up there and its current orbital pass took it was taking it from Tasmania to Sydney. Well, that's sweet. Let's look at that. As we look down from the front facing camera on the ISS, we are southwest of Tasmania. Note that there's a large band of cloud to the southwest of Tasmania. Then that same band is visible on the Himawari 8. Then we can see Bass Strait, which is the water being between Tasmania and the North Island of Australia, is also relatively cloud free. Then there's another large band of cloud in the southeast corner of Australia. Finally, the ISS is over Sydney, and as you can see, it matches the clear skies to the south and the east of the airport. Note the little patch of cloud to the west of Sydney. I call that the Campbelltown cloud. Drag race time. Pretty sure that is Sydney down there, what do you think? The 
Jerry pointed the camera down at this diamond-shaped clearing, so I went and found the closest timestamp in the KML file and used the coordinates from that in Google Map. As you can see, it all lined up perfectly. And note that is Campbelltown down there behind that little small plane zipping past. And here is a good view of that Campbelltown cloud from the plane. Planers are now approaching the South East Australian cloud band, which is visible again on the Himawari 8 and the ISS stream. The plane is now flying over Bass Strait and the skies are nice and clear as you can see on also on the Himawari 8. The plane is now crossing from over Bass Strait to the northern parts of Tasmania. Tamar River Valley, Launceston. Out the window you can see the southern end of a beach and that is Macquarie Harbour, Tasmania. Flying further southwest from Tasmania, there's another large cloud mass, and there are a few distinctive shapes in that that we might be able to pick up in the Himawari images. So here's an interesting video that was sent to me recently by Where's Wally, and He's looking at the flight conducted by Greater Sapien from Sydney, Australia to Johannesburg in South Africa. Now this flight went significantly south. In fact, it reached further south than 60 degrees south latitude. It went to 62 degrees. Now, as we know, the spacing between longitude reduces by the cosine of the latitude. So the cosine of 60 is 0 0.5 so at 62 degrees south latitude the spacing between the lines of longitude is less than half than what it is at the equator and what that also means is that if we look at the 1037 miles per hour rotation at the equator the speed of that will be less than half at 62 degrees south latitude so what in fact occurs as the aircraft is flying west at 62 degrees south latitude is that it is crossing longitude faster than the movement of the sun and therefore for a short period of time on that flight the sun is not moving in the normal direction across the sky it is moving in the opposite direction and you'll see that when i play this video 
Now, this is something I have experienced personally on a flight from Italy to Colorado in the USA. We tracked north over London, Iceland, and tracked west at 65 degrees north latitude. During that time, I observed the sun become stationary in the sky and in fact start to rise in a westerly direction. As soon as we turned south and started uh, heading to lower latitudes, the sun resumed its normal movement across the sky. So it's again another very clear proof that we are not living on a flat earth. So I'll play Where's Wally's video now and you will see the sun position during certain parts of the flight. When looking through Greater Sapium Sydney to Johannesburg flight, as it was getting down near Antarctica, I was noticing one thing. Jerry had shut the window because the sun was coming in. So skip forward an hour, still the window sh shut. Skip forward another hour, still it shut. Seems like the wind sun was coming in that side for a long time. So anyway, sun and calc.org and let's have a look. And sure enough, it seemed like the plane was um, traveling in such a way that it was actually traveling faster than the sun there for a few hours. So Greater Sapien, you were supermanning along there for a little bit. The sun angle was actually going backwards for about an hour. Pretty impressive. So I got the lat longs for a couple of the waypoints down south there and did the calcs. And sure enough, the plane was traveling just over 800 kilometers per hour. Not sure what that is in knots, Wolfie, but I guess you'll know. Then the next thing I did was have a look at the radius of the Earth and a 62 degree latitude angle down, did the cos of that. Anyway, it works out about just under 800 kilometers an hour to travel around the circumference at that latitude. I guess that's why the sun angle was going backwards, hey? At 1336 UTC, the plane was about to cross the coast north of Durban. There's a large sandy dune visible about 100 kilometers northeast of the plane. And about and that's also northeast of Richards Bay and it's clearly visible from 12 kilometers up so it's easy to locate when you have the GPS coordinates from the bad elf. I then had a quick look on the Electro L sat image and zoomed in on the coast where the plane crossed. It showed up that there was clear skies and the ocean and patchy cloud over the land. The Electro L image was too early for this flight when Jerry crossed the coast but the image is better at a later time but it's not as clear due to a lower sun angle and also the Electro L images are 11,000 by 11,000 pixels so huge. And I'll just zoom in on the later image, the little red X is roughly where the plane crossed the coast. I looked for the Discover, Epic Discover camera to be able to look at the images over the Indian Ocean, but they were offline, probably due to the US government shutdown. So then I looked for the Electro L, and it had some amazing images, but you couldn't really see far enough south. It was like the plane had to fly right from Sydney around, right around the edge of the circle of view. But interestingly, the Electro L and the Himawari 8 were able to tie those two images together thanks to Riley. By that I mean Tropical Cyclone Riley. And finally, after having got really, really bored with just matching up um, GPS locations with clouds, with Himawari 8, with Electro, with Discover, although I couldn't really do that as much as I wanted to, it was just all too easy. But finally, here we are. We've seemed like we've arrived at Johannesburg Airport, and that's Jerry right there. So good job. Well done. Thanks for allowing me, Jerry, to have a good play with all this data, the video, and the KML files and everything else. Thanks, Jerry.
Oh, stop, stop, stop. How did that get in here? Okay, well, that's that, guys. Here's the final wrap-up. This is what we've seen. We've seen that Sydney exists, and by extension, therefore, Australia exists. We've seen clouds from the plane, and geolocated them via the GPS and they match with the Himawari 8, the ISS feed as well as the Electra L Russian feed. We've seen that the plane tracked to the south, south, southwest, not to the west and not to the north. We also saw that the plane clearly flew over Tasmania tracking southwest. We saw that at 62, 63 degrees south that the sun stood still and even went backwards for a bit. That was well cool. We also saw that the sun was shining into Jerry's window and therefore he had to have the blinds down for like four, five, six hours or more. We also noticed that when we do the sun calc, the azimuth angles to the sun went from like 70, 80 degrees when it was at Sydney to 45 degrees and then back up again. And the plane stayed level the whole time. And then we see when the plane crossed the African coast that um, near Durban that it was coming in from the southeast flying on a northwest track towards Johannesburg All good stuff and much good fun. Thanks Jerry for allowing us to play with your data Oh and finally one big thanks to Wolfie6020 who without his help um, none of this would have happened